Shalom. Kahlayla Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rakakatash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that is scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. The world is a stage. So when we look at what's happening around the world today, what's going on globally, we see that there's many hot spots. So the wicked global elite are attempting to establish order out of manufactured chaos. And ultimately, all roads lead to the MOTB or the CHIP. <clears throat> so there's no such thing as, as an accident. And there's a very famous quote by Franklin Delano Roosevelt or FDR that in politics, if something happens, it was planned that way. There was no such thing as an accident. And really from a spiritual level, the Most High is orchestrating the left and the right hand events that are occurring and that are to come, especially from the left hand. So this is going to lead to a dire need to establish order out of chaos. And the solution is going to be an off-the-shelf solution, which is the MOTB. Excuse me. So I want to go here. I recommend you watch this video. This video here is by the beloved Elder Malcolm, the head out of Chicago. So I recommend you watch this video. Every time I play videos, I get a strike and they take down the video. So I've not been very successful playing videos. But the bottom line is there's only one people that you cannot talk about. And there's another famous quote. If you want to know who's ruling the world, look at who you cannot criticize or talk about openly that own all of the major news and media outlets, that own the international banks, that own the national banks, whose faces are on the currency at least most of them. So these are the people that are behind the scenes. <clears throat> Let's go here. Let's go to the book of, let's go to the book of Psalms. <coughs> Excuse me. The book of Psalms, chapter 73. Let's start up at the top. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. Now, most of us growing up in the church have been taught that God loves everybody. So when I was growing up in the church, the preacher would read about one or two scriptures. Three, if we were lucky, if he was having a good day, he would read three scriptures and then start tap dancing along with the choir singing. That was about it. We didn't go into prophecy or scriptures. <clears throat> I didn't know. I thought Israel was just a landmass over in the Middle East. So the Lord is going to save his people and remember the promises that he made with our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. A psalm of Asaph, Psalm 71, excuse me, Psalm 73 and 1. Truly, God is good to Israel, 
even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. So right now, they have their own military. They have their own banks. They print the money. They're living in palaces. Rothschild's net worth has accelerated upwards of $700 trillion. So when you look at this from the outside, it looks like that they have it going on. They're in their heaven, which they are. But through prophecy, we know we know that they're at their end. The Lord is getting ready to pull the carpet from underneath their feet. And this is the beauty of studying Bible prophecy. So they're going to become peasants and go from rags, go from riches to rags. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. One of the things I always go into when I read this is they're able to take melanin from Jake's organs. Many people coming up missing, but yet the Rothschilds living to be about 100 years old. I think David Rockefeller lived to be about 105. So they have the best medicine. They have the best health experts and wellness experts, the best medical teams at their disposal, waiting on them hand and foot. But yet they're the wicked. So what more do you think the Lord is going to do for his elect? So what we're seeing here is nothing compared to the glory and the riches of the kingdom to come. We're not going to have to take somebody's organ. The Lord is promising immortality to his anointed ones. So there's a reason people coming up missing, especially Jake. Because melanin is a conductor of electricity and it helps to protect against a various assortment or variety of different diseases. And that's just my opinion. I'm not giving medical advice here. Anyway, we got to be careful with how we put things. <clears throat> there are no bands in their death but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. How many Rothschilds or Rockefellers have you seen in the news for misbehaving, being arrested, drug trafficking, human trafficking? Well, they own the news and media outlets. So we have a biased news reporting agency. 70% of the data is off. So what good is it? So they're protected in their heaven. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. So this is what Elder Malcolm is going into. Everything that they have, they obtained it by violence, bloodshed. <laughs> really going back, and I'm thinking going back as early as when Jerusalem fell. But their track of bloodshed goes back further than that. But if we just capture that time and moment, 
millions of Israelites fled to Africa and millions were massacred during that massive exodus. So this man has obtained everything that he has through violence, through the sword, his blessing. So now all of this stuff is coming to light. And a thief has no glory. A murderer has no glory. As a matter of fact, let's get that. Let's go here. Let's go to Habakkuk. I'm trying to remember where it's at. I think it's Habakkuk 2. Yeah, let's go to Habakkuk 2. Let's go to verse 16. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. So their glory is being converted over to shame. All of their fame, they're, they're being put to shame for. So the people that we looked up to growing up and just saw him as Jesus, as the Savior. Many of our women still see him as the Savior, as Jesus. And he's not under the cloak of violence when he walks the streets as Jake is. Because Jake is under the curses. So many, pe many people feel guilty to even stand up to him because he covered the faces of the true judges, of the true savior, of the true saints. So this man has been virtually uncontested over the last 500 years or so since the rebirth of the Roman Empire or the Renaissance. He has just elevated himself to prominence, high status, fame, and glory. And really, this was, this was a protective hedge that the Most High put over him. If anyone slay Cain, then that punishment shall come upon him sevenfold. And I'm paraphrasing. So the reincarnation of Cain, which is Esau, Edom, was put on the earth to fulfill prophecy and to play the lot of the wicked. So they had a certain time by which to rule. But now all their shame is starting to cover their glory. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. For the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee and the spoil of beasts, which made them afraid because of men's blood and for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. Look at the violence that's happening right now in the so-called Middle East. So right now they want to drill through Gaza. Oil has been discovered underneath the land areas of Gaza, or the Gaza Strip. British Petroleum, or BP, wants to go in and begin to build oil refineries. That's what they want to do. And then they want to make another access route into the, let's pull up a map. <clears throat> be easier to explain going into a map. Yep. Let 
Mediterranean. Okay, let's go here. Some of these maps suck bad. <coughs> Excuse me. Right here. Into the Mediterranean Sea. <coughs> Excuse me. So they want to build another. Because right now, a lot of uh, ship trafficking takes place through the Suez Canal. But what they want to do is go in and build another access route and open that up into the Mediterranean Sea <clears throat> and double the amount of barrels of oil that's going through that area per day. Right now, if I'm not mistaken, it's somewhere around 20 million tons that are being trafficked through that, through that area per day. But they're trying to double that that amount of cargo that's able to traffic through that through that particular canal. <clears throat> and then recently, large oil reserves have been discovered in the Gaza Strip. <clears throat> and I know it's hard to see here, but right there on the western portion of Israel. Anyway, I just wanted to pull that up. So violence covered them. And this is their glory. This is their constellation. A covering of iniquity and abomination. Because they were not given the birthright. <clears throat> Let's go back. Let's go to Psalms and we'll get ready to close this out. Psalm 73. Yep. The book of Psalms, chapter 73. Let's go down to verse 5. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They have more than heart could wish. <clears throat> so they have their, their fame and their glory on this side, which they have gotten by deceit and treachery and theft. So there's no glory or major prominence in a thief or a mass murderer. <clears throat> they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. <clears throat> and they're doing this now through their media. We're not even getting half the stories of what's going on in the Gaza Strip. Because when you look at who controls and own the media, it's by the same people that are behind the sinister plans of what they intend to do in this Gaza area where the oil reserves were recently discovered. And that canal that they want to build going through there to provide an alternate access point to the Mediterranean to expand big oil, to expand profit and revenue going through that area by doubling their profits. So this is a major vantage point for them to control. <clears throat> Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. So this is the real thug, the real G, sleazy E. Every time I read this, I can see a 
Edomite with his hat turned to, a, to, to the side, wearing gold teeth, blonde hair, and tattoos all over his face, with a teardrop tattoo going down the left side of his face. So this is the real thug, the real nigga, if you will. <coughs> well, what usually what we see on the media is the opposite. Now, are there wicked two-third Israelites? Yes. But who's running the earth? Evil E. Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. So they live, breathe, and conceive bloodshed. This is what they do. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. <clears throat> so they are not satisfied with blood. <clears throat> they have more than heart could wish. Let's go to Sirach 12. And they're using control over the media propaganda in order to dominate the storyline, to be the first to tell a lie. So they control misinformation. An enemy, this is Surat 12 and 16. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips. But in his heart, he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. He will weep with his eyes. But if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. So he speaketh sweetly with his lips. So he tells his side of the story. That is very flowery. That is very victimized. So he plays the victim, but he is the villainous victim. So he creates the problem and orchestrates order out of chaos, like these smashing grabs that are going on. So then they're going to mandate, be able to justify what? Well, if we tag them and digitally input our tracking device into them, they're not going to be able to buy or sell or terrorize the neighborhoods anymore because they'll be under constant surveillance and monitoring. So he allows the chaos in order to, to make the people accept what he has to offer as a solution. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. So they boast on what they've obtained through unrighteous dealings, through trickery, through warfare, bankers' wars. They're boasting on their ability to fund both sides of every war. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. So they're speaking out against the Lord's anointed, against his temple. And they're dominating the mainstream. So most people think that they are the Lord's people. Even unto this day. Therefore, his people return hither. And waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. So they're going to drink the dregs of the cup of the Lord. <clears throat> which is captivity, hardcore bondage, and affliction. Let's go to Jeremiah. We'll close out here. Jeremiah. <coughs> Excuse me. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, verse 10. Let's go to verse 9. If great gatherers come to thee, 
would they not leave some gleaning grapes? If thieves by night, they will destroy till they have enough. So in the old world, you would leave 10% of your crop or what fell to the ground for the poor. So you would not reap the entire harvest of what you have. So you would really, there should not be a need for any or no reason that we should have people starving to death. That's totally out of order. Unacceptable. But the international bankers, they're greedy, they're bloodthirsty, and they're resource hungry. Resource hogs. If great gatherers come to thee, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? If thieves by night, they will destroy till they have enough. But I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. And this uncovering, remember, they covered themselves with the covering of violence that we read in Psalm 73. So the prophecies are helping to expose this man who steals land, who rapes, robs, and colonizes the indigenous people, the aborigines of the lands. Who's doing that? So when we read this, the scriptures complement each other. It's a song. So who's terrorizing the land with draconian laws, unrighteous decrees? Those that are wearing the covering of violence that we read in Psalm 73. <clears throat> so all the prophets would have agreed with one another. All the prophets do agree with one another. But I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. Leave thy fatherless children. I will preserve them alive and let thy widows trust in me. So their widows are going to come under the authority of the sons of Jacob. They're going to become a possession. <clears throat> For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken, and art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished, thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. So they're going to drink from the cup of affliction, of slavery, hardcore bondage, of going into a peasant class status, from riches to rags. See? Psalms 73 and 10. Let's go back to 9. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. <clears throat> so the Lord is getting ready to equalize the earth. So he's going to return righteous judgment to the inhabitants of the earth. Jacob is going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. And the Edomites are going to be downgraded into their rightful lot as servants. And they're going to be prisoners of the pit. And they're going to be scattered and serve in every quadrant of the earth. 
Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. Our praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, or Kwakadash. I recommend that you watch this video by Elder Malcolm, and I will put it in the, in the description box. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Palm Yeshuala and the Bible. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatam, Shalom.